what's up, family? On today's episode, we conclude our study into the lion's den of Daniel chapter six here on the Last Things Podcast. curious to see okay will this god that daniel served will the most high god save him like this will he save him that's just my opinion i believe he was really he was worried about daniel but i really think it is we're going to keep going as i really think he was curious about what god was going to do he seen daniel praying to him he knew daniel prayed to him so he's like let's see if daniel's god can save him Look at verse 17. A stone was bought and placed, excuse me, over the mouth of the den. The king sealed the stone with his own royal seal and the seals of his nobles so that no one could rescue Daniel. You see that? They put a, they put a stone and put a seal on it. Eerily, eerily similar to what happened to Christ when Christ was buried. They rolled a stone, right? They rolled in, 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 uh, you can read it in Matthew chapter uh, 27, verse 63 through 66. Let's, let's read it real quick. Matthew chapter 27, verse 63 through 66. The next day on the Sabbath, the leading priests and Pharisees went to see Pilate. They told him, sir, we remember what the deceiver once said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise up from the dead. So we request that you seal the tomb until the third day. This will prevent his disciples from coming and sealing his body and then telling everyone he was raised from the dead. If that happens, we will be worse off than we were at first. Pilate replied, take guards and secure it best you can so they sealed the tomb and post guards to protect it so as we see here this ain't the first time we've seen something used and sealed up by the king we've seen it we're seeing it with daniel but we also seen it with christ as well after he was crucified okay now look look at verse 18 this is why i say this is this is why i really this is why you kind of got to respect Darius. Verse 18. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night fasting. Ooh, very different. This first time we've heard something like this. A king fasting? He refused his usual entertainment and couldn't sleep at all that night. He was worried about Daniel. This is why I say Daniel had a lot of favor with Darius. Darius couldn't. Darius was so worried about Daniel, he couldn't sleep because he knew Daniel was in, was innocent. He knew Daniel was innocent. He knew Daniel had done nothing wrong and it was really nothing that he could do to save him. He was just worried about Daniel. He was so worried. That's why that's why I say Daniel had some, that's why, you know, earlier when we talked about Darius was thinking about making him ahead of making him putting a whole empire underneath Daniel. That Daniel had a lot of favor with Darius. Darius really cared for Daniel. He really did. He was, he really did care for him. And he, and he knew Daniel was innocent. He knew he hadn't done nothing wrong. And he also knew how those officers really used him to get to uh, get their plan into action. See, that's why I say, man, when you when that's why I tell you, everybody ain't going to celebrate you. It's always going to be the people's closest to you. And they'll always do something to sabotage your success. That's what's what's the old saying? A wise man keeps his friends close, but he keeps his enemies closer because he can always keep out. He's always watching them, knowing what to expect. 
So as, 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 as God begins to elevate you, as he begins to bless you, always keep an eye on your surroundings. Look, a prime example is John Morant. Look at what's going on with John Morant right now. There's a video that's out. There's another where he's using a toy. He just got suspended for 25 games. And now he has a toy gun using it as a lighter to light a candle or something. And it gets released to TMZ. One of the guys that I listened to, he was like, he's got some, John Moran's got a snake in his camp. He said, um, the name of the guy, the name of the channel is called Self Talk, Self Talk. He said, he's got a snake in his camp because how did this video get to TMZ? Somebody had to release it to TMZ. So do you see how John Morant is, it, is, it's the same thing he's going through. He's got, he's got so much success. People in his inner camp, in his inner circle are using his behavior to sabotage him in the public eye. But he's too blind to see that. He's too blind to see it. So I'm telling you, when success comes, be aware of your surroundings, okay? Be aware of your surroundings. Because you're going to have the peak, because everybody going to flip. Everybody good when everybody's good when things are flowing and you just got you, you everything is flowing good for you. Everybody love you then. But as soon as it, when things start flowing and you start telling people no, or if things dry up, watch how fast they turn on. You. They'll turn on you faster than anything. So be careful as success, as God begins to elevate you, he begins to bless you, he begins to promote you, he begins opening door, new doors in your life, watch your surroundings. Be mindful of your surroundings. That's why you got to be, that's why you got to stay constantly in tune with the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit lead you and let God can, let God show you the people who should be around you. Okay, let's keep going. Verse 19, because we uh, we were right there with Darius, okay? So let's look at verse 19. Very early the next morning, the king got up and hurried out to the lion's den. You see that? He was gone. It's next morning. Let's go. Verse 20, when he got there, he called out in anguish, Daniel, servant of the living God, was your God whom you serve so faithful, able to rescue you from the lion's? Excuse me. You see, this is why I say I really believe Darius. This is just my opinion. This is my opinion. This is why I say Darius really was testing God as well, because he he said, OK, if Daniel prays to him like he does, then surely his God will save him. That's why he kept asking the question, did your God save you? That's that's he was worried about Daniel. But he was also really putting faith into God, like God, like he wasn't praying to him, but he was putting faith into him. Like, did your God save you? Because I know you serve him faithfully. Did he save you? And look at verse 21. Daniel answered, long live the king. My God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouth so that they could would not hurt me. For I have been found innocent in his sight and I have not wronged you, your majesty. Did you see that? He said, oh, God, oh, long live the king. My God sent his angel and they took care of me. He said they took care of me. He said, God found me innocent in his sight. (laughs) When people find you guilty, God say you innocent. (laughs) When people judge you wrongly, God says you innocent. Man, and that's you know the Bible says the uh, Satan is an accuser of the brethren. He's a he's the acu- day and night. He he is the accuser of the brethren, right? So while Satan says you're guilty, but Jesus says, "Oh no, he's in he or she is innocent." <laughs> Glory, hallelujah! Jesus say, "No, nah, he's innocent. I died for him. He accepted me as his Lord. He he or she they accepted me. I paid the price for them." They're innocent. Oh, and that's why Satan is so mad about that, because we blow it every day. But then the blood of Christ continues to save us. That's why he comes. That's why he goes to and fro, seeking whom he may devour like a roaring lion, because he hates the fact that we can blow it. But yet God continues to save us. 
He continues to give us grace and mercy and he continues to bless us, uh, continues to bless us. And when we stand before him in the kingdom. God will judge us innocent when we really should be found guilty. But he judges us innocent. Why? Because of the blood of Jesus. Woo! glory. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Boy, let me stop because I'm about, oh man, I'm oh let me I'm about to go into a praise mode. Let me stop. Let's let me get through the episode, okay? Let me get through the episode, okay? But that's just my opinion of, of Darius. I really believe he was testing God. I really do. And when Daniel and when Daniel confirmed it, like, yeah, my God saved me. Look at verse 23. The king was overjoyed and ordered that Daniel be lifted from the den. Not a scratch was found on him, for he had trusted in his God. Do you see a parallel between this and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? You see a parallel? They were both in, they were, Daniel was in his version of the fiery furnace. But guess what? He comes out unscathed the same way Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out unscathed when they came out of fiery furnace nebuchadnezzar was so was amazed at what happened there and here we are over 40 years later darius is amazed as well i want you to notice a key a key point about this while i bring that up do you realize that shadrach meshach and abednego are not around anymore now we don't know well, I never I didn't really research that. I don't know what happened to them. I don't know if they're still a, if 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 they're still living during this time or not. The Bible really doesn't say we I don't think we really hear anything else from Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. All we hear now is about. No, nah, I can't say that because, you know, Daniel is out of chronological order. I'm going to research that to find out whatever happened to Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Because now that I think about it, like uh, the Bible, I don't believe the Bible talks about them anymore after after the after uh, the fairy furnace. I don't think we hear any more about them. It, I don't think we hear anything more about them. I could be wrong. but We'll find out as we keep going through Daniel. And once we get through Daniel, if we don't hear anything else about them, I'm at the I'm going to research and see exactly what happened to them after the fairy furnace. We know they were promoted. But as far as their lives afterwards. Scripture doesn't say I don't believe, but we'll find out. And if we don't if we don't hear from them, if we don't hear about them through the rest of the book of Daniel, I'll I'll find out some info. I'll do some inf I'll do a, a study on what happened to them. OK. But look, but verse 24, then the king gave orders to arrest the men who had maliciously accused Daniel. He had them thrown into the lion's den along with their wives and children. The lions leaped up, leaped on them and tore them apart before they even hit the floor of the den. Did you see that? See, this is why leadership. This is why you have to be careful of your intentions and your decisions because they affect everybody underneath you. Those high officials and those administrators, everybody who was plotting against Daniel, they had no clue. Not only were they not going to succeed in what they did, it was going to cost them not just their lives, but it cost them their wives and their children's lives as well. This is why you must be careful in leadership. Your decisions and actions affect everybody underneath you. You have to be careful. You have to be careful. We have a lot of leaders who serve who have this high mindedness. They just they just think about themselves. They don't think your actions affect us. I see it at work all the time. I see it at work all the time. You can see it out in the you, you can see it with the government officials. You can see it. It's a way of life. Those who serve in leadership. You have to be careful because your decisions affect the people underneath you. Adam is a prime example. Look at what Adam did. Had Adam not listened to Eve and did what God told him to do, things would be different. But guess what? He didn't. Eve ate of the fruit and then she gave it to Adam. Afterwards, what happened? God came and he was looking for who? Adam. Why? Because Adam is the one in charge. God wasn't going to find them. He was going to find Adam. 
You the one I put in position. You the one that I put in place. Why did you let why didn't you do what you why didn't you do what was right? See, God didn't have to charge up Eve. He charged up Adam because he said, you the head. You're the reason that this happened because of you on your watch. See, that's an example for the father uh, for a lot of men as we're leaders in our homes. We have to realize, hey, when stuff goes on in our houses, God comes to check us because we're the heads of the house. So you got to understand that when you're a father, when you're a leader, when things go wrong, God comes to check you. He's not going to check the people around you. He's going to check you because the first thing he's going to say is, why is all this going on? Now, if you somebody who you keep who you keep praying and you talking to God about things, I believe God will then begin to help you to help begin to give you the information to help you navigate through things better. That I do believe. But if you somebody that you just we that you just re uh, nearly doing whatever, when it comes time, God's going to come check you. Those high administrators, everybody who came against Daniel, they had no clue that their decisions was going to not just affect them, but their wives and their children as well. That's the part that I look at. Their children died because of what their parents did. Oh, Lord, have mercy. That's a prime example of a generational curse. We talked about that before, how things that your forefathers did, God comes and punish. And you have to you possibly have to deal with the consequences of their actions. It's, it's sad. It's sad when I read that part. I feel so bad for those kids. I did. I felt bad for them. I truly did. Look at this, look at this verse 25. Then King Darius sent this message to the people of every race and nation and language throughout the world. He told everybody throughout the world, peace and prosperity to you. I decree that everyone, verse 26, everyone throughout my kingdom should tremble with fear before the God of Daniel. You see, this is why I said I really believe he was testing Daniel. I do. Why? I mean, he was testing God. He wanted to see you. Daniel served his, his God faithfully. Let's see. Did his God save him? And he saw. Yes, he did. And he's and, and look, he was why and look, he didn't it didn't take him long like Nebuchadnezzar to respect God. Darius was like, oh, no, I respect him. Right. Oh, no, we're going to get this right right now. Look, at, let's read the rest of verse 26. For he is the living God and he will endure forever. His kingdom will never be destroyed and his rule will never end. He rescues and saves his people. He performs miraculous signs and wonders in the heavens and on earth. He has rescued Daniel, Daniel from the powers of the lions. Do you see that? Never can I mean never can this. Oh my goodness. Darius the Mede is saying the exact same things, is is honoring God the same way Nebuchadnezzar finally honored God after his whole seven year uh banishment from the kingdom. Darius was never banished, but he even he he learned in a short amount of time how faithful God is to his people. He didn't have to go through everything Nebuchadnezzar went through. He saw it right there. He was smart. He said, oh, no, you we're going to we're going to tread lightly around this God here. We're going to fear him. Let me tell you the things that he has done. He look at look at how he said my king, everyone throughout my kingdom should tremble with fear. He said, y'all better be scared of this God because he ain't playing no games. He ain't playing no games. Darius knew that. He said, oh, no, I, uh, uh, we ain't playing with nobody like this. No, 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 no. We ain't playing with nobody like this. That's just amazing. And it didn't take him long. He saw that and he said, uh, uh, nope, never. We ain't playing no games. Let, let me let me nip this in a bud right now. No, we not doing that. Look, so verse 28, finally, so Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus, the Persian. So Daniel, it says here, through, through Daniel prospered through both reigns, through Cyrus's reign and through Darius's reign and through Cyrus's reign. Now, like I said, that I believe that Darius is the king of the is the king of Babylon. 
I believe, of course, we know Cyrus is the king of the Medes and the Persians. But I believe that Darius is just under Babylon. And Cyrus is the overarching king of everything. Uh, once Darius, once Darius, uh, I guess he died afterwards. I really don't know. Once he dies or whatever, Cyrus then just takes over. Like, okay, it's under me. I'm going to handle it. That's, that's my opinion from the studies that I've seen. However, there are some people who think uh, Darius was somebody else's, somebody else as well. I can't remember the name that some people think. But just from the research that I found, I I think it was Gabaru, the soldier that Cyrus sent ahead um, during the uh, invasion of uh, Babylon. OK, but as you see here, Darius, all, Darius already put has put it has told everybody respect God, put some respect on his name. Because this is how he is with his people. And that's the end for and that's the end of Daniel chapter uh, six. And it is a perfect segue into our offer of salvation invitation to Christ. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Damien. Listen, I wanted to um, do a special a special interruption right here real quick. Um, last week when I was recording this. I kept having problem after problem after problem with um with my internet. My internet just kept dropping and I could not understand what was going on. I'm like, come on, man. So I thought I might needed to needed to get a new Wi-Fi adapter. So I changed some stuff around and I finally, I think I got it stable. But anyway, I kept having this issue and I never had that had that issue before. And I just so it kind of frustrated me because I said, man, I'm gonna have to redo this whole episode. But later on in the week, I came across something that I said, oh, I think I need to talk about this. And I think that's why I had so many interruptions, because I, I think I was supposed to talk about this that i just found out a few days ago okay so let's let me let, let me get into it real quick um everybody knows what artificial intelligence is okay if you don't know let me define it for you artificial intelligence is defined as the theory and development of computer systems able to perform tasks that normally require human intelligence, such as visual perception, speech recognition, decision making and translation between languages. OK, so that's the really big definition of the word um, of what artificial intelligence is. Now, we've seen so many examples of artificial intelligence throughout the years. OK, now. From what I've seen, from where I've been reading. There are four different types of artificial intelligence. There's four different types. OK, so let me pull up the first type. I'm, I'm trying to pull up a scripture real quick that I'm going to use in a few minutes. I'm going to come back to it, but I want to pull this up first. And make sure I got it right in front of me. OK, cool. All right. Now, there are four types of artificial intelligence. OK, the first one is called reactive machines. Now, I'm reading this off of a particular website. It's called Course, Coursera.org, C-O-U-R-S-E-R-A.org, okay? Now, there are four types of uh, artificial intelligence, as I said. One is called reactive machines. Now, reactive machines are AI systems that have no memory and are task-specific, meaning that uh, input always delivers the same output. Machine learning models tend to be reactive machines because they take customer data such as purchases or search histories and uses it to deliver recommendations to the same customers. Uh, example of it is Netflix recommendations. Netflix recommendation engine is powered by machine learning models that process the data collected from a customer's viewing history to determine specific movies and TV shows that they will enjoy. OK, so that's an example of a re of a reactive machine. Basically, you give it information and it's always going to give you the same thing. So 
The example of it for us today would be a Netflix recommendation engine. You know how you go on Netflix and it gives you movies that might be recommended to you. That's an example of a reactive machine. OK, now the next one is called limited memory. The next type of AI is limited memory. As I said, this algorithm algorithm imitates the way our brains Neutron neurons work together, meaning that it gets smarter as it receives more data to train on. An example is the self-driving cars that we have, like Tesla. You know, um, that um, self-driving cars that observe other cars on the road for their speed, direction, and pro uh, proximity. Okay, we've all seen though. We've all seen these type of cars, right? Okay, so we know what is what. Limited memory, an example of that is a self-driving car. The more information you give it, the smarter it gets, okay? Now, those two types are already present in the world right now, okay? Now, these next two are not present. We don't have those right now. The next one is theory of mind, okay? Theory of mind and... um. If it is developed, theory of mind, AI, could have the potential to understand the world and how other entities have thoughts and emotions. In turn, this affects how they behave in relation to those around them. OK, so it says here humans understand how our thoughts and emotions affect others and how others affect us. This is the basis of our society of society, human relationships. In the future, theory of mind AIs could be able to understand intentions and predict behavior as if to stimulate human relationships. OK, so in my opinion, if you really need an example of this the of theory of mind, how to understand the world works and thoughts and emotions, my example from a TV from a TV perspective, I would say like. Maybe Kit from Night. No, I don't know if Kit from Night Rider would work. I, I don't think Kit would work. Kit wouldn't fall in that category. I don't know a good example for theory of mind. I don't know that one. I, I have to come back to that one. But this is the one that we need. Self-awareness. OK, self-awareness is. Um, this go is says it says in the article, this goes a step beyond theory of mind and understanding emotions to being aware of themselves, their state of being and a being able to sense or predict others feelings. For example, I'm hungry because I know I'm hungry or I want to eat lasagna because it's my favorite food. We are a long way from self-aware AI because there's still so much to uncover about the human brain's intelligence and how memory, learning, and decisions, decision-making work. Example for self-awareness is, of course, um, Terminator, Skynet. Sky, remember in Terminator, what did, Arnold, what did the Terminator always say? Skynet became self-aware. And once he became once that system became self-aware, that's when it decided to get rid of all humanity. Right. Another example of self-aware, as I just said, is Kit from Knight Rider. Kit always said how what he you know, sometimes he thought about he um, was always aware of everything, everything going on around him. He, he sometimes he couldn't perceive human. He, well, I don't know. He might be theory of mind because he couldn't perceive human emotions or things of that nature. OK, but he could think for himself and he could do for himself. You know, of course, you've seen everybody my age seen Knight Rider. You've seen Kit drive itself. All right. So those are the four types of AI. Now, you're asking me why are we having a discussion about AI? There is a program on Twitch. In case you know, there's two, everybody knows what Twitch is. It's um, the site where everybody goes. They play their game. They play a game in front of um, in front of in front of customers. Customers have a certain channel to set up, and people playing the games on there. Right? Twitch has a program on there called AI Jesus. Yes, it's called AI Jesus. I saw this. On, I was at work and I saw a, another guy on YouTube talking about it. And I said, oh, I need to check that. So I went on Twitch 
and I saw this program. It's called AI Jesus. Basically, what it is is an artificial intelligence of Jesus Christ. They have it programmed to, they have a lot of um, its programming is based on the Bible. Okay, so it's script, so it's got it's got it's scripturally, it it's got it's programmed with all the with the Bible itself. So it could give you a scripture, it could talk like a it'll talk and it'll sound like Christ, and it will um it'll talk and it'll sound like Christ. It'll it 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 get it, it from its perspective, it's giving you a Christ-like answer. So you could type in and ask a question of it, and it'll answer that question from Jesus perspective or what it thinks would be Jesus perspective of answering that question. Okay. So an example of that, I'm going to say an example for that would be limited memory. I'm going to say that I'm going to say limited memory where limited memory, for example, limited memory of self-driving cars. I'm going to say an example of the AI Jesus would be limited memory. I could be wrong. If I am, if someone's listening who's got more uh technological technology tech who's more technically sound than me, then you know, hey, reach out to me and let me know. Shoot me an email, let me know if I'm right about this. Okay, so that's what I think he uh it will fall under. I seen some people on there asking the question about asking a lot of crazy questions. One at tried to ask about um the end times. Um tried to ask about the end time a couple of others asked was going to ask about the rapture but i didn't stay in it long enough what i wanted to do i was gonna and i was just gonna type in a question itself i was gonna just test what it was saying so i was gonna ask about the two witnesses just to test it out but i never did i had to set up an account i'm talking about that because that the steps where we're going with artificial intelligence it's getting scary. Now we already have these first two. The 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 next two is theory of mind and self awareness. Now we don't have those two yet. Of course, we definitely don't have self awareness. Okay, we don't have that, but we're slowly getting there. But as you can see, as we're we're constantly evolving. Why am I talking about this? I want you to uh, the, remember the scripture that I said that I was trying to find earlier that I was going to come back to later on. Here it is. Revelation chapter 13, verse. Um, it is verse 13. No, Revelation chapter 13, verse 14. OK. Now I'm going to um, and I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm going to read it. OK. Revelation chapter 13, verse 14. And with all the miracles he was allowed to perform on behalf of the first beast, he deceived all the people who belonged to this world. He ordered the people to make a great statue of the first beast who was fatally wounded and then came back to life. Verse 15. He was permitted to give life to this statue so that it could speak. Then the statue of the beast commanded that everyone, that anyone refusing to worship it must die. Now, New Living Translation calls it a statue. King James calls it an image. OK, so we see here this is talking about the beast out of the earth. As we know, uh, during the tribulation period, there are going to be two people. It's not just the Antichrist. It is the false prophet as well. The false prophet is the one helping the antichrist there are two of them it's not one it's two the false prophet is the one and in, in fact the false prophet is the one who's going to push everyone to take on the mark and as you said as we saw as we read he's going to do a lot of miracles in the name of the false prophet one of these miracles is bringing a statue or image to life and this image or statue will come to life and it's going to command anyone who who refuses to worship it will die. Do you see how we're slowly getting to that statue or image? Now, King James says an image, New Living Translation says statue. But do you slowly see how we're getting to there to where we could create an artificial intelligence that is the artificial intelligence that is backed 
by the Antichrist and the false prophet. We're slowly getting there. We're slowly getting there. We, we can see that. And we're seeing a, pre, a, a a prototype of it with this AI Jesus. I'm not saying I'm not saying now I'm not saying the AI Jesus is the image because it's not. It's not because the, uh, the we don't know the identity of the Antichrist. So that's not it. But as you can see, you can see we're slowly beginning to get there, though. We're slow. We're starting off, but we're slowly getting to the point to where we can see this scripture come to life. Where we could see the false prophet create something and it becomes self-aware and it tells people you worship me or you die. We're slowly getting there, guys. So I want to talk about that. AI Jesus and talk about the four types of artificial intelligence, because we don't know if it's going to be an image. We don't know if it's going to be a statue. All we know is that the, the false prophet is going to create something that's on behalf of the Antichrist, and it's going to come to life and it's going to command people worship me or die. Now, remember those and we're seeing it with the with the a with the. AI, the artificial intelligence that's slowly getting to, you know, becoming self-aware. Remember the holograms? I talked about this with a class before. Remember the Tupac hologram, the very first one that we that we had in Coachella all those years ago? You could see it could possibly be a hologram. Whatever. So we don't know what the image is going to be. But as we see technology beginning to increase. When you look at scripture, you can dig, you can look at it and you can say, oh, wow, I think I understand this stuff could possibly be true. Now, this stuff, could, this this is coming. This this is you could see you. It, it, it's more believe some people, they read the Bible, and they don't believe it. But a, a person who's on the street who does not believe in the Bible, they could read across it and they could see and they'll be like. Oh, wow. I can I can see that to be true because we have these things going on right now. So I want to talk about that AI Jesus. And I wanted to bring up how we're slowly getting to the point where we could see something that becomes self-aware of itself. And we could see, you know, Revelation 13 verses 14 through 15 come to pass we it's not too hard to imagine that because we have something that we can look at and say oh wow that 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 could possibly come to pass a lot of what people don't understand a lot of revelation is technology you know it's you know we got technology has to get to a certain point for certain things to come to pass right an example would be like the um when the bodies when um well i don't know about the two witness bodies but when things are talked about and it's seen all over the world, well, of course, you can't. The only way you can see something from all over the world, an example would be like when Jesus is seen all over the world or when um, when the false pro when the, when the Antichrist, this is a better one, when the Antichrist goes into the temple and proclaims himself to be God. That's the abomination of desolation. We're going to get to that in Daniel. That's coming up in Daniel in a little while. We're going to get to it. But that's what's going to happen. And everybody in the world is going to, to see it. However, the, the room that he has to go into to do it is called the Holy of Holies. And it is sealed. There's no windows. There's nothing in there. There's no windows or anything. It's sealed from the outside. So how is the world going to see the Antichrist go into this room? It would have to be on something like CNN. Now, you could say the whole world will watch a story on this. Absolutely. Why did not the whole world just watch the tragedy that happened to those guys that went down to the Titanic? Didn't the whole world watch that? So. It's not hard to imagine, hard to see the whole world watching that event take place, the abomination of desolation, because we've already seen all the news coverage and the media focus on one thing, one specific report all over the world. OK, so technology has to get to a certain point for some for some scripts for scriptures and some of the prophecies to come to pass. Technology's got to catch up. 
Technology has to catch up. You, We could talk about Revelation 13. We could have talked about this in the 60s or 50s. No one would have understood because, the, first of all, they didn't have Internet. And computers were so much bigger back then. It costed thousands of dollars, you know, so much money. I'm going to say thousands, thousands of dollars to get a computer. Now, in our time, computers are so common now. You know, I'm, I got this computer right here, my main computer that I record on. And then, of course, I have my laptop sitting right here in front of me. Those people back then in the 50s and 60s, they couldn't imagine stuff like this. Technology has grown. And because technology continues to evolve, I tell I told I told somebody before I said, when an iPhone comes out, that model is out. But trust and believe there's already two or three other models that are already out as well. Technology is always a year when we get something. It's always a year behind. So when like an iPhone, you say like we got an iPhone seven, but as you saw the iPhone eight, iPhone nine, iPhone 10, those weren't just built. Those were already built. They were just testing, working out the kinks like these new PlayStations, the PS fives that came out. Trust and believe there's a PlayStation six already built. They're just testing it out before it comes out. Trust and believe when something comes out, a uh, upgraded model is already being built. OK, so with these examples of AI, trust and believe there are some other models that are out there. They're just working on it, but they're going to come out as well. And we're going to get to the point where that AI is going to become self-aware. So and at that moment, it won't be too hard to imagine the image or statue that Revelation speaks of that the false prophet is going to bring to life. And that statue is going to command every statue or image is going to command everyone worship me or die. It won't be too hard to imagine. OK, so I wanted to talk about that and just talk about see the evolution of artificial intelligence and how seeing the way things are going right now. It's, it won't be hard to imagine uh, something like this image or statue coming to life. We couldn't imagine it then. But now with the way technology is steady increasing, we can imagine it now. Amen. Amen. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I know my video cut off before I did that, but this before I, I was going to do my um call to salvation, but I'm going to do my call to salvation now as we always do. This is the moment of our podcast where we want to invite you to experience Jesus. We want to invite you. We want to invite you to come home to the kingdom, come home to come home to Christ. As I, as I tell people, you know, man, I tell you, being a Christian is, is not easy. You face temptations, you face battles. But one thing about it is you fight in a fixed fight. A lot of things that we go through, God has already made a way out. You know, Isaiah talked, you know, how we say, how we work things, we work things from beginning to end, right? Well, in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah said, God doesn't work like that. God works from our end to our beginning. So a lot of things that we're going through, God has already made a way out for you. You just haven't gotten to it yet. That's why I say endure hardness as a good soldier. Yes, it's going to be hard. Yes, what you're going through, it might not, it's not fair. Yes, what you're going through is not right. But trust and believe God has already made provision for you. He has already made a way out for you. Your job is to just keep the faith and keep pushing forward until you get to the point where God said, hey, this is what I designed for you. This is, this is your breakthrough. Sometimes you might be ready to give up and God and, and your breakthrough is, is is comes the very next day or it could come within the next hour. All you have to do is endure hardness as a good soldier. But for those of us who are those of you who are out here and you've never experienced Christ on that level, I want to invite you to. Come home to the faith. If you hearing, if you listening to this and you hearing something, say you need to pray what he, you need, what he's getting ready to say. You need to pray it. You need to pray it. Do what it says. I'm telling you, your life might be hard. You might be ready to throw in a towel. But God said, what did Jesus say? Come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy, heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. 
And he's not a man that he shall lie. If he told you, bring all of your burdens to me and let me give you rest. That's exactly what he's going to do. And he said, take this yoke upon you. Let 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 me teach you my ways. The yoke I give you is easy and the burden I give you is light. Everything that you're going through right now, it's heavy for you. It might be depressing. You might be dealing with a state of depression. Whatever you're going through, Christ says, bring it to me. Give it to me and I'll take your heavy burdens and I'll give you something that you are more than capable of handling. Sometimes we we and you might feel just like a sense of emptiness or just a empty feeling in your life like, man, I'm missing something that because that spot is reserved for Christ. That's what you're missing. It's reserved for him. He set you apart. He has a great work for you. But before you can accomplish the work, you got to get connected. You got to get connected to the vine. You got to get connected. And for those of you who just struggling, you looking for change in your life, this much I can guarantee. When you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Jesus said this, old wine cannot, new wine cannot be poured into old wine skins. You have to pour because the wine skins are burst. You got to pour new wine into new wine skins. Jesus said, he that is in me is a new creature. Old things pass away and behold, all things are made new. When you come to Christ, you have just changed over from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. And your life will never be the same again in a good way that I can promise you. Don't struggle with the things that you're dealing with on your own and don't feel like nobody cares. For God so for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. He cares because if he didn't, if God didn't care for you, he wouldn't have sent his son to die for you so that you had a way out of the kingdom of darkness and that you could be in the kingdom of light because of what Jesus did for us on that cross. Now you yourself can go boldly before God. You yourself have now have now have the right and have the opportunity to become a son or daughter of God. And when you mess up, God will have favor on you. He'll forgive you of your sins and you can move on. And when you stand, when you die or, or when you die, you'll stand before him righteous. Or if the rapture takes place, you'll be one of the ones that Christ comes to get. Amen. So this is what I want you to do. Bow your heads with me. Close your eyes. Just pray this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner in need of a savior. I ask you, Lord, to come into my heart. Make me, shape me and mold me into the person you've called me to be. I lay my life down. My life is now in your hands. In the mighty name of Lord Jesus, I pray and thank you. Amen. Guys, we're going to believe that if you pray that simple little prayer, you have just transferred over from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. And we believe that your name is now written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Amen. Welcome home, my brother. Welcome home, my sister. Man, and because you made your decision to come home, there's a party in heaven because of you coming home. Amen. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you for allowing me to interrupt the episode to talk about this because I felt like it was very important to, that I, I I felt like this was the reason why um why I kept having the internet issues because I haven't had no internet issues again since that day. So I feel like this is what something I was to talk about. Okay. So thank you guys so much for tuning in next week. Oh man, we got us a banger of an episode. We're finally moving in to the prophetic parts of Daniel. Daniel chapter one through six has been pretty much historical. Now, we're moving into the prophetic parts of Daniel with Daniel chapter seven. We're going to spend we're not we're going to spend a lot. I think I think that that particular chapter, that might be a three a three episode chapter, maybe even more, because there's so much to unpack in Daniel seven that we're going to take our time with that. But we are moving forward. We're going to start with Daniel chapter seven next week. Man, I'm telling you, I can't wait because this is what I've been waiting for to get to the prophetic parts of Daniel. And we're finally here. So next week we'll be covering Daniel chapter seven. Amen.
Amen. Thank you guys once again so much for tuning in. I love you guys. You guys have a blessed week. As I say, pray the Lord's prayer before you walk out of the door and pray the armor of God's prayer before you walk out the door, you and your family, so that you will all be protected from the wiles and the tricks and the temptations of the devil. And I want to say this to you guys, too. Make sure to spend some time in prayer in the mornings before you leave. Whether uh, Spend it in prayer. Spend, you know, Get you a devotional. Do a little devotion. It's just 10-minute devotion before you start your day. I promise you'll see a difference in yourself when you start doing that. Spend more time with God. Spend more time in his presence. Amen. Amen. Just, just a little tip from your boy, because I've been I've been lackadaisical with doing my devotions. I'm like a hit or miss, but lately I'm trying to get more committed to it, more spending more time with God. And I could see a, a slow change in myself, certain things that I'm beginning to notice and beginning to work on. So as a tip from your boy, do your 10 minute devotional with God in the morning before you leave. Just it don't take long, five or 10 minutes. And I promise you'll start seeing some good changes for yourself. Amen. Amen. You guys be safe out there. And I see you here next week with another episode of the Last Things Podcast where we are on a journey to truth. Love you guys. Be blessed.